Hey, what's up, guys? This is my first manga review, and it's going to be on Bleach Chapter 635. Actually, this is going to be more or less a live reaction, and my review will be posted most likely tomorrow. Uh, so let's get on to this. So I know that Bleach left off with Basby pretty much getting his ass kicked by Hash Vault. So now we are starting off with Loloto. She's just like, damn, figures that bum Basby got his ass handed to him even after his soapbox round. Just let me fight him one on one, just the two of us. Uh, and I guess she's talking to you watch, which he's in the bottom left panel of the first page. So this is going to be pretty insane because I thought that I didn't... I, I, your watch is just gonna eviscerate these stern riders. You know, oh yep, yep. I, I go to page two and Loloto, she has like this big hole in her. Giselle's just in the corner, it just looks like she was just like completely wrecked by your watch. Like, you know, she oh, dude, second panel down on like the fifth page on the manga stream one. Giselle's just in a pool of blood, just like this, just like completely dead and then Lolota's just like pity though we couldn't even put a scratch on you and you watch though is like the eye things going on and like it looks like it's just melding with his hair which is just I, Kubo stop it's kind of nasty I like you watch before you know um so we go on to the next page and I think Loloto just died. <laughs> and you, and you watch just took a seat. He's like, no, then I can finally get back to taking my nap. So I guess that it is officially nighttime. So this is like the third day of the invasion, I believe. We get the cover page. And it shows Hashvault, like, in Yuha, like, back to back. And it shows Yuha kind of get this story with the eyes. Then the next panel is um hash vault and it looks like he's getting the a um the ai's that you watch has where he has multiple different eyes and his own eye so i just think that shows that he gets the a power or he gets you know your watches absolute or almighty power just at night um such a cruel callous power your majesty being able to see into the future so yes, it's kind of confirmed that you that he can use your watch's powers pretty much to how ha uh, your watch uses them. He can use it to see the future. So I feel like this opens up the opportunity for Hashvault to actually be like the final villain or something. Be some I don't know if Kubo's gonna go that route, but Hashvault still has a story to tell. I feel. And then we see the Sternware. I cannot think of his name. Oh yeah, the Miracle, the the Miracle guy. He's the he's Sternware M. What the? Da -da -da, nobody's here. Not any opponents. Not anyone at all. Damn you. Lil Perninda, Naklevar, you guys are so screwed up when I get my hands on. So I guess he's pissed off that his stern rare buddies left him, and then we get Ichigo's group with Ginjo, and now just like those, just like looking off. And there he may and Chad just looking stoic as a old well, Chad looking stoic. They can't find uh, Naklevar, I guess, uh, and then. That damn uh, Grimjo, what the hell was he thinking? Is he planning on going all alone on this? Now let's split up and look for him. And then we see a panel of Naklevar just, just sweating, just like hiding. He's like, ah, well, what can you do? Kurosaki, Ichigo, and the others are raving lunatics who clearly thinks he's too good to follow orders. I have no idea who these people are. I sure as hell never expected to bump into them face to face right off the bat either. Well, let me catch my breath, drink a ca nice cafe latte, and come up with a plan. And, and it looks like someone's behind him i think that's probably yeah that's grim joe that's grim joe he just starts fucking running away it just it's fucking hilarious uh, that askin is one of my probably my favorite sterner at this point he got the eyes and thing going on and then he's just like i'm out of here don't want to fight grim joe that guy probably has a fucking seguna itapa to you know pull out but um no, grim joe's pretty much there's just dialogue back and forth and then Perninda shoots something at him, which looks like a tennis ball. He's like, it's a gift. Go on. It's all yours. And then as if something could hit me like that, Grimdo does a little slashy thing with his claws, most likely. He's, and then he gives a weird look. And he's like, what the hell is this? 
and then he got poisoned, and he's on the ground, and I guess not Clavar, he finally got his poison with his power, um, I don't think his power has been fully explained, but I know that you can get pretty much fucked up if you have contact with him, I guess, with things that he throws, you should have listened to your mother, didn't she ever tell you not to take gifts from strangers, after all, it might be the death of you, and Grim Joe has socketless, or not socketless eyes, but pupilless eyes. Grim Joe dead, confirmed, no. But then we get some pictures of Shuhei and Unahana's lieutenant, and I forgot who the other guy is. And they're just talking about, you know, their forces. Oh, there will be. And then there's an uh, X axis, and he shoots Shuhei right through the. F Oh, it went, like, went right through his chest, like, from the side. Ooh. That probably hit something. Be, uh, die when they get separated. All living things die when they get separated from their pack. All I do is bide my time. And one by one, sure, make sure the weakest of the herd stay separated. And then we see <laughs> Zaraki and the hooded Quincy, which I'm pretty sure that is Perninda. Um, what the hell is this thing? Was that actually a question? Or were she, I love Kimpachi and Mayuri. That's, they're, like, some of the best chemistry, I think, in the series that was showed in Hueco Mundo. I just think that they're completely polar opposites of the spectrum. And, I don't know, I just feel like that really does add to, um, their situation. Because I'm assuming they're gonna be fighting Pernindo, which I feel like that's gonna be overpower. You know, like, Mayuri's really fucking powerful, and so is, uh, Zaraki. So, my, uh, there'd be someone dumb enough in the Kote 13 to ask another reason that something neither of them have ever seen before was, so it's only natural for me to simply ignore you, fuck it, I'm gonna kill it. Oh, so they're looking at Perninda, and he's just like, fuck it, I'm gonna kill it, Zaraki. Is it just me, or did he just say something new? <laughs> Don't be silly. I hear you, Sama, and then we get Shina Zaraki about to shoot, or about to slice Perninda, and then... Um, Mayuri's just like, wait, Zaraki, and he waits, and he only got one of my arms, what, okay, so then we get a shot of Zaraki, he's like, he only got one of my arms, so uh, he was attacked by Perninda before, and his arm looks a little eviscerated, it's not cut off or anything, it's his sword hand, but it's definitely bloodied up a little bit. By exchange, I managed to give him a new haircut, and it shows Pernindo with a gash coming out of his head. And his, like, facade is about to explode on the next panel. He's like, what the fuck am I looking at? Is that another question, or are you still talking to yourself? So, pretty much, Zaraki and Mayuri are having some problems in their communication, I guess. And that was the end of the chapter. Pininda is about to explode, and I really am hoping to look to see what's under there. Now that he's exploding, maybe something biological, maybe something more on the lines of BG9, except that, you know, he has explosion ability or maybe a gaseous ability or something like that. Or I originally thought because its name is Perninda, that maybe it was a girl underneath or something. You know, like this manga, you know, like the cliche of she's, like, hot underneath with this, like, obscure, you know, attire on. So, I don't know, that was a great chapter, not gonna lie, I'm gonna have my review out whenever, but thanks for watching, guys, see you later.